Okay, in this video, we're going to talk about qualitative analysis of our graphs of motion. So we'll talk about displacement over time graphs, velocity over time graphs, and acceleration over time graphs, and how we can gain information qualitatively from their slopes and where they start and stop. We'll start with displacement over time graphs. So on a displacement over time graph, if I have horizontal flat lines like the ones shown here, the object is stationary. I can tell the object's stationary because if I look at the point here, it's still at the same point later on in time and it's still at that same point as I go further into the future. The same could be true of this red line. It's always at the same point, it always has the same displacement, even though the time changes. Okay. I can see that object A is to the right of me, to the right, because its displacement is in the positive y direction of displacement. I can tell that object B is to the left because it's below the x-axis and therefore it's negative displacement. I can also see that object B is closer than object A because the distance is not as far. Okay. If I have a little more complicated looking displacement over time graph, like these diagonal lines here, I can tell that the object is moving and that the object is moving with constant velocity, meaning that whatever amount of displacement it had over this period of time, over the same amount of time, it will have the exact same displacement in the future. And therefore we get a straight line. I can tell that object C is going faster than object D. C is faster. than D because it's displacing itself more over the same amount of time than object D. I can tell that object E is moving to the left at a constant velocity because its displacement is below the x-axis and therefore negative. So I would say that C and D are to the right, and E is to the left. Right, and to the left. Now for the most complicated distance displacement over time graph. If I have curved lines, that indicates that my object is not only moving, but it's moving with changing velocity, therefore it's accelerating. Accelerating. So if it's moving with changing velocity, it's accelerating. I can tell from this curved lines on this graph that the object F is accelerating because its dis amount of displacement over time is increasing and then it begins to decelerate as it approaches the end of the timing. And I can tell that object G is actually accelerating only it's accelerating to the left because it's below the x-axis. Interpreting velocity over time graphs is similar 
to uh, the displacement over time graphs, but it's different in a few um, key, key ways. So horizontal lines indicate not that it's not moving now, but that it's moving at a constant velocity. <coughs> its velocity is constant, it's not accelerating. So I know it's constant velocity, even, but yeah, I know it's constant velocity because as time passes, the velocity itself doesn't change. In this case, I can tell that um, object A is going much faster than object B because the distance from the x-axis is greater for object A than it is for object B. I can also tell that object A is moving to the right and object B is moving to the left because object A is above the x-axis and object B is below the x-axis and therefore its values of velocity are negative and to the left. Diagonal lines on a velocity over time graph indicate that the object is moving with a constant acceleration. So its speed is changing, its velocity is changing. So the velocity at time here would be less than the velocity as time is here, as less than the velocity as time is here. From these diagonal lines on this graph, I can see that object C is accelerating more rapidly to object, uh, than object D, because object C is increasing velocity more over a shorter period of time than object D. I can see this from the slope of these graphs. I can tell that ob both objects C and D are accelerating to the right. Whereas object E is accelerating to the left. Curve lines on a velocity over time graph indicate that the object is moving with a changing acceleration. So the amount of change in velocity from this point to this point is less than the amount of change in velocity from this point to this point. I can see from this graph that F is moving with increasing acceleration whereas object G is moving with decreasing acceleration because the slope of G is less and less and less over time and the slope of F is greater and greater over time. So for acceleration over time graphs if we have horizontal lines, it indicates that acceleration is constant. Almost everything we deal with in this class is going to have horizontal lines because we don't want to deal with changing acceleration over time in IB. Okay? I can tell that object A has a higher rate of acceleration than object B because it's farther from the x-axis than object B is. I can also tell that object A is accelerating to the right because it's to the it's above the x-axis and I can tell that object B is accelerating to the left because it's below the x-axis. <coughs> 